Alright, Value Lab Force FX calibration. <sighs> We're going to do the first four steps. Alright, so here's the Value Lab. Turn on. Run the self test, LED test. Let's just do all that for you now. All LEDs in seconds working. All lights in seconds working. And da 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 da. Alright, that is self test LED. Next up to get into calibration mode, we're gonna hold down the recall, cuts pure button, and coag low button, okay? First thing you should see is this window. This is this is uh, test one, it's not really a test. Uh, uh, call it page one of the calibration, whatever. And then this number is just a software configuration. It really doesn't matter to us at all. Two, this is your date, August. Press this for the day. 14th and high for the year. There you go, that is today, 905, Wednesday, 14th, August 2024. Alright, three, it's the time that I just showed you. Press full grade for the time. It says 905. There we go, 906, the freshness, and four. The actual first real test. For this, all you need is generator, REM cable. Doesn't matter if it has a pin or not. So let's call this a generator. I'm, I'm an idiot. Oscilloscope. <clears throat> okay, channel one lead out. Hook that up to each side of your REM test cable. Yes, they gotta be separate. Okay, this comes up. We're gonna get a waveform. Go. What we're looking for is 82 kilohertz, or as close as we can get to. It's pretty damn close, so I ain't got to do nothing here. But in the event that you're not this close and you need to calibrate it, you need to find your R96 potentiometer or variable resistor, and that's this little blue box right here. You see this? There you go. This guy right here, it's got the orange on it. That orange can come in other colors, you may not even have it on yours. It's just a paste that the manufacturer puts on there to make sure that nobody's messing with the calibration. You see this little screw right here. You just need a little eyeglass, eyeglass screwdriver to turn it. All right. If you want to go up, turn counterclockwise. You want your number to go down, it's clockwise. I believe I could be wrong. Anyway, you adjust that until you get to 82 kilohertz or pretty darn close, and then you're good. And we move on to the next test. Coag, press up. Now you need a 10 ohm load. You can use particle surgery analyzer like this, the QAES2. Uh, which doesn't work for this because 70 and 135, which are the next two intervals, this can't do. You can go with good old decade box, if it works. Or if you've got one of these, BC Biomed uh, ESU analyzers, which a lot of us have. Generally, anything you can do to get 10 ohms, 70 ohms, and 135 ohms. And use your multimeter to double check to make sure your numbers are accurate because it's a very small window. And if you were too far out from those values, you would fail this test. So now for this part, we're gonna move our oscilloscope. All necessary. Don't use it for anything else. All right. Continue using the same REM cable test rig. Alligator clips. this up to whatever you're using for a resistor source. If you've got some physical old school resistors, that's cool. It's kind of a pain. Build those things out and then transport them every time you do this. So, <clears throat> continue this thing. All you've got to do is verify where you are. So, multimeter, leads. We are not worried about the resistance value of the cables. Uh, so, when this thing says six, we are this. So let's go a little lower. It's too low. Got stabilize. It's pretty close. Ten point two. I'll take that. So put these back in. Give it a good ten seconds. You know, count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, however you want to count. Stop watching, I don't care, but about 10 seconds. And then go up to the next value. Seven. Let's 
go back over here. Let's get us up to 70. Close as we can get. And yes, obviously this means this needs a good calibration. 69, here we go. Looks pretty darn good. I'll take a point three. Maybe later on I'll figure out what the resistance value of these cables actually are. Alright, let that sit for a hot minute. Alright, oh, now 135. Here we go again. It's like I've done this a few times. Alright. There's a 135. Remember we said good 10 seconds. So 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi, 6 Mississippi, 7 Mississippi, 8 Mississippi, 9 Mississippi, 10 Mississippi. You can spend a minute if you want, it doesn't matter. But I would not go less than a 10 second wait on this. All right, now when we press up, there we go. We go to the next test, which is five, which means those values are saved, we've passed our test, we are solid. If you are getting a 120, a 122, 121 flashing here and it alarms a couple times, you have failed. Uh, if you look in the manual, those three numbers specifically, 120, 121, 122, are telling you you have a calibration failure. So either your resistance value is too far out, uh, or there's something wrong with your control board or the main board. Something's out of whack. All right. Uh, this unit will not pass test five, so we're not going to go that far, but there are the first four uh, parts of the calibration window. Right